Hello, welcome. It's so nice to have you guys. Come in. This is the living room. This is the first room in the house. There's a fly. <laughs> That's like a paid actor. She's got a sign form. I know, I'm like, this is our living room. It's a little bit more formal. We love to welcome everyone into this part of the house first. So we do a lot of sitting. I record my podcast in here. As you can see, it has the most beautiful light coming in. This is my little reading nook, sleeping nook, napping nook everything nook. It's kind of like my natural habitat it's become. And we spend a lot of time in here. Definitely over the course of this renovation, my style has developed a lot from a little bit chaotic and mismatched to having a blank slate meant that I could kind of choose things from the start, go a little bit more minimal, a little bit more pared back but with some statement colors and then pick your statement furniture. So we chose all our Eva furniture as like the anchor of each room and the anchor of the whole house. In fact, they were the only things we had in the house for a very long time and then build around it. I've also been really lucky that my husband Nick is amazing at not just all the building, which he did, but we had pretty similar ideas on the interiors and we had a TikTok go viral recently where it was all about me, him choosing something, putting it in the cart and me just throwing it out. But it was really funny. That happens maybe 10% of the time, but actually we've been pretty aligned. So we've developed our style together. We've made all the decisions together, except a couple of them. And he's been pretty good. So I think um, I'd introduce you to him. Let's go. Hey. Hi. How are you? So this is our dining area. This is my builder, baby daddy, husband, partner in crime, business partner. <laughs> you must be sick of me by now. I am. <laughs> Help. <laughs> this started as our dining area, but has also been doubling as your office, my office, a podcast table where we entertain all our friends. Um, we don't disagree on many things, as I mentioned, but this choice of interior structure is kind of not, it's a, it's a point of contention in the house, but that's all right. Oh. As you can see, spatial awareness is also an issue. We met under very romantic circumstances. So very classy beginnings in a nightclub on the dance floor, but we were zero to hero and dating pretty quickly. I went, I was still at uni, so I went on exchange to Paris and had this whole idea that I wouldn't change my Facebook status to in a relationship because I wanted to sow my wild oats and have my time in Europe and then come back and revisit the relationship. And Nick decided he'd turn up in Paris. I pretty much proposed a couple of months after we met, right? Mm -hmm. You were very eager. And then... Um, Keen being. Which was so flattering, it was lovely, but I was still at university and I thought it was a bit soon. So I made a wait. Another 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> But you've done an incredible, incredible job on this house. So let's keep showing you guys what we've done. Let's do it. Oh, I'm cleaning up all the time. Who's me? Nick's pride and joy. Look, this is one of the first things we actually built in the house. This was this awful little Harry Potter cupboard. And um, we thought we'd make something out of it. And all of this timber's from Tassie, like my family home, like 30, 40 years old. Before we had plumbing, we had a wine cabinet, complete with LED lights and everything, so it was a real priority. It will have been a very long journey by the time this baby comes out for me to be able to enjoy something that's in here, but I think the first bottle will pop. Will probably be, I think some bubbles. I've got to celebrate. Another option is the goon bag, but we keep those in the fridge. And speaking of the fridge, let's go have a look at that. This is the kitchen, which it was really your work of art. It was the daggiest kitchen you've ever seen. Think mid 90s, dark green laminates and cream cabinets. It was uh, floral tiles on floral the floral tiles. Yeah. <laughs> the floral tiles really were just spectacular. We yeah. had to let them go. Yeah, we've been in here a couple of months and so far have loved every single thing that we've put in. Yeah, it's worked it well. Okay, this is where I need some assistance. 
<laughs> this is our master bedroom, which is where I spend the most time at the moment. <laughs> but this Where's is, your pillow? Uh, I hid the pregnancy pillow because it's just not a vibe for anybody. Here is the pregnancy pillow. <laughs> really messes with the aesthetic of the room and also your sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> but is a godsend for me, so um, yeah, I mean, really takes up a lot of room. It's a great time. I sleep on 95% of the bed mm -hmm. and Nick gets whatever 5% is remaining. This little bit over here is my spot. <laughs> <laughs> but I always have to be closest to the toilet and that's not pregnancy related that's all the time <laughs> but this is our first king bed we've ever had I don't know how we survived in our houses where the bedrooms were smaller mm. and it's our Eva bed we've been sleeping on it for a couple of months there are nine different firmness options and it's the best sleep we've ever had 100% it's I ruined beds for you you guys live in hotels no it's good love it <laughs> I have a label maker for some reason. I don't even know why it's in here, but I just noticed it. And um, a battery charger. What's in yours? Um, so, mine has some chocolate coated almonds, an apple, pregnant lady snacks, a tennis ball for sciatica and also just sports. Cause You're a I'm, golden retriever. I'm so sporty. Oh, a note from Nick. I love you, stinky bum. That's my favourite. You've never called me Stinky Bum. I don't even know when you wrote that. Well, since the ensuite's so close to the bed now. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. The next room is the nursery, which we haven't finished yet. We've still got a few little bits and pieces to pull together, but there is a nursing chair. I have been known to recline in it without baby. <laughs> so I've just been testing it, giving it a road test. Ignore this, this is temporary, it's not for the baby. This is not the crew we will be using, even though the rocking motion kind of might be good. But this is probably where I will be spending a lot of time, so I should get used to it. It's very comfortable. We have been so lucky to have had a baby shower and had lots of beautiful gifts from our friends and family, but I think the one that takes the cake is this little mobile, which has a custom toy on the moon of our late golden retriever Paul who passed away in my first trimester and it absolutely broke me to know that he would never meet our little boy but this way which is just so sweet it's a beautiful Australian business run by some mums and you send them a photo of your pet and they create a way for them to for Paul to watch over the little boy and this is the last room. This is our guest bedroom, which is also, if Nick is in the naughty corner, this also becomes Nick's bedroom. <laughs> but we also thought when the baby arrives, it would be good to have two separate rooms or if any friends come over to stay. And then on this side of the room, we have another incredible Eva piece of magic. This is a sofa, which turns into a day bed, which turns into an actual bed that you could use. So you could have a whole family stay in here. What is the weirdest thing you have ever had happen in your house? What is the order of their like kitchen drawers? Like cutlery, <sighs> utensils. We actually, one of our curated memes the other day was, you know you're from Australia if you have like forks and knives and utensils and then like proper cooking utensils like spatulas and stuff, then glad wrap and sandwich bags and then tea towels and we were like, I'm exposed, I feel seen. That is exactly our drawers. And we didn't even mm. Google it, we just intuitively went, yep. We have vastly different questions. Mm. Mm.